right, so another day, another project. Today we're taking a look at Smart Suite, and more specifically, a project that was kind of inspired by one of our clients recently, where the client basically wanted AI to make sure that the products that the person bought matched their dietary requirements. They're kind of like in the food delivery business, you know, the boxes, food boxes delivery business. So yeah, without any further ado, let's take a look. Oh, by the way, if you're new here, hi. My name is Alex and this is what we do here. We take a look at uh, low code tools, mainly Airtable. We're taking a look now at Smart Suite and we build automations around them. Now let's uh, go ahead and see how this whole thing works. So in our typical fashion, we're going to take a look at how this whole thing works. Following that, we're going to look at how I set up the database. It's actually very, very straightforward. And then finally, we're going to take a look at how the automation is done. Again, very easy. Along the lines, I'll make a few comments about how things are not ideal, or maybe I'm just being picky about how Smart Suite looks at certain things. But along the lines, I'll also make some comments about things that they do really, really well and that I really like. And I actually wish Airtable was doing as well. Cool. So let's take a look. We have a table of clients. We have a table of orders. We have a client, Alex V, who has submitted an order for a mystery box. And the mystery box contains these specific items. Now, Alex has got certain allergies and preferences. He's sensitive to gluten and severely allergic to peanuts and peanut products. So let's go ahead, trigger the order and we trigger the order just by checking or unchecking this simulate new order. And then let's just jump here and we should see in a few seconds how AI will add a few comments to this table. Now, the idea here is that we're gonna receive replacement products, which is important. So for instance, peanut butter energy bars, that should be replaced with the closest alternative that we've got in our list of products. But also we're gonna see some AI comments so that we basically will know 100% why certain changes were made. Let me just make this large so that we can see. There we go. You can see instantly how we get these results. Basically, anything that needs to be swapped over has been swapped over and the peanut butter bars have been replaced with gluten-free vegan cookies. So this was kind of done by design why it replaced peanut butter bars with gluten-free cookies. And it's because we asked it to stay within the, you know, food type. Because occasionally in my previous testing, it would replace the bars with uh, like a cauliflower pizza base or something like that, which is completely, you know, different. As you can see, it has worked really nicely. We've got our comments, we've got the swap required little flag so that whoever the user is, they can jump in and they can ah immediately see that, okay, I understand why certain changes were made. Now, let's take a look at how to build the database. Okay, so let's take a look at the database. What we have here is super straightforward. We have a list of clients. Again, I'm not using any fancy fields. Any fields that you might need in order to recreate this setup, they are all here. We have the name, we have the allergies and preferences, just a text field. We have orders, which is a link to our orders. We also have the client user ID, which is a formula field that basically just brings the record ID in. Nothing really fancy, honestly. And then we have our orders uh, table, just the title mystery box number one, simulate new order, just a checkbox, link to clients, link to order details. That's it. You don't need anything else. From there, we have order details, which uh, again, very straightforward. We have the title, which kind of looks like this order ID, then the order detail field. Then we have a space pipe space, the product space dash space and the quantity. Now, this is one of those points where I'm not really huge fan of how this works. Why couldn't this just be a formula field like it is an air table? I mean, we have formula fields. Why can't I change the type of the leftmost field? It seems to me a little bit dumb. But one thing that I do like, on the other hand, that they've very smartly done is that if we go into the title, yeah, if we modify the field settings over here in the manual input, you see how it 
how we have the option to require entries to be unique and require an entry to this field like these two options boy oh boy i wish there were an air table but yeah ultimately i honestly feel like if you want to create auto-generated or formulated strings you should be allowed to use formulas and not some kind of weird janky way of doing this that is our title field here then we have our auto number field that just basically gives a unique number to every row then we have a link to orders a link to the product a quantity just a number field some ai commons which is just 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 a long text field and then swap required finally last but not least we have our list of products Again, super straightforward, just a title, just a very long string, basically, enterable, nothing really fancy. And of course, we have the backward links that were created automatically for the link back to the order details. That's it in terms of database design. Let's take a look at how the automation works behind the scenes. Okay, so now what we've got is the automation. The automation actually triggers in a much easier way compared to Airtable, which I like. I wish there was a little bit more control over it in the sense that, you know, when you set up your trigger over here, you choose a connection, you choose a solution. So let's choose order management. And you can then choose the table that you want to trigger on. In our case, it's orders. And that's it. It You don't get any more say on on how a record ends up very quickly into make it's a thing that i don't like it's it's very annoying but ultimately once that happens we are then looking at this sort of workflow just to explain it very quickly what we have is just like three parts first part is right here this part over here this creates a string out of all the products and we're going to talk about how to fetch all the products from all the records rather from a given table then the next part is this one over here where we are fetching all the orders and creating a string out of that then we finally have our ChatGPT module that takes in all the data and then we have a quick little iterator that splits the feedback that we get from ChatGPT into items that need to be replaced and items that don't need to be replaced so that we update all the items from the order and just receive commentary from AI. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this. So what we have is initially we get the client. So right after we get our trigger, we fetch our client, which is down here. I'm just wrapping the client record ID over into the search field called client user ID, which is included in the clients. Then we fetch all products. And again, here I am basically hard coding this particular solution. I could probably get this out. I believe this is one of these records, but for now I just hard coded it. You can see my token here. Following that, we have our account ID. We have just basic stuff. The one thing that you need to notice is that we're using an HTTP call in order to fetch all the records, because that's what I want to do. I, I want to fetch all my records and for all my products from my products table. And you know what? It's kind of difficult to do with any one of these pre-baked modules that we have from SmartSuit. When I choose find records, you are required to, to give a very direct comparison. You can't use a formula, for instance. You can make an API call, but that for me, just simply for some dumb reason, just doesn't work. I'm following all the instructions to the T and just doesn't work. It's funny, but I actually had to use an API call straight using an H HTTP module. From there, we iterate the items. We then bring in all the titles together, separated by a comma. Then we have another iterator. So once we jump in here, we have our link to order details, which is basically from our triggered order. We have our related order details field. Then we fetch that record. We just basically perform a get record where we match the search value of the title. Well, the title of the order to the value that we have in our array. That's another interesting thing. Instead of giving us an array of ideas, Ds, which is kind of like what I would expect. SmartSuit gives us an array of leftmost fields, which is not really useful because it's nice to know what that 
is, but when we are dealing with automations and especially this kind of caliber, we rely on IDs, not some kind of string, you know, that could be misinterpreted or could be duplicated very easily. So bad, bad choice, smart suite. Once we get that record, we then just create a text aggregator where we aggregate the ID which is the actual ID of the record. It's a very long string, looks like this. Then we have the product, the product name, and the quantity ordered. From there, once we're ready with those two key pieces of information, the order, the initial order, the client itself, then the products, like all of our products in our catalog, then we have what the client actually ordered. Once we have these three things, then we can ask AI to do the following where I'm using ChatGPT4 right now, not Turbo. It performed a little bit better with ChatGPT4 in this case. My prompt goes something like this, you know, you're a savant nutritionist with 30 years of experience, blah, blah, blah. Then we have user food order, user dietary requirements and preferences, available list of products for potential swaps. And then we get our array style answer in desired formatting. We've done some similar things with Airtable in the past, but essentially we've got the order, ID of item that should be changed, suggested product swap or NA if no change needed, and then reasons to back up swap decision. And you see how it's kind of separated or delimited by a double hashtag. Our mission or the mission that we're giving AI kind of looks like this, where we basically say that the requirements should match the orders and it should give us an explanation as to why it needs to make certain swaps. Yeah, and finally, do not add any conversational language. Temperature is set to 0.2. Very, very straightforward. Nothing really crazy going on. Once that is done, we then jump into an iterator where we essentially split the content by the hashtags. That creates a nice little array. Once that array is processed and we get the individual line items, then I'm splitting that value by the double pipes, as we saw. And the second item gives us the item that we should swap with. If there's nothing to be swapped, it will just print NA. So in other words, if that does not equal to NA, in other words, we need to swap something, then we update the record. We update that particular order detail. And it's very easy to set up. As you can see, I'm using exactly the same formula. The first part of that split brings us the ID of the particular line item that we're iterating from iterator 17. And that immediately matches the correct record. And then we update the product, which is the product that needs to be swapped. And the comments that AI gives us, which is the third part, which is number three. And we just map that into the AI comments field. The other path does exactly the opposite, where it does equal to NA. And finally, we don't need to swap anything out. Of course, we just leave it exactly as is, minus the product. We just leave the product exactly as is. And also we make sure that swap required is set to empty while I forgot to mention that over here. And I don't know if you noticed, but the swap flag is set to yes. So that every time we know that a swap is required for that particular item. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching this quick tutorial. Hopefully you liked the idea of using an AI for food safety. If you have any other ideas that you want me to explore using SmartSuite or Airtable or some other low code tool, do let me know in the comments down below and I'll make sure to respond to that as quickly as I possibly can. Until the next one, cheers.